Hi, I'm Jean Marsilio from Cilio Music and welcome to Quick and Easy Activities for Pre-K and Kindergarten. This session is great for anyone who's new to teaching Pre-K or anyone who finds themselves running out of ideas of what to include when lesson planning. I use and reuse these ideas almost every week throughout the year and it saves me a ton of time when I'm planning. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I've shared many of the ideas there, but I wanted to include them in this presentation in case you missed it. A little bit about myself, I have taught pre-K through sixth grade since 2009, but for the past three years, I've been teaching ages two through kindergarten. Although I miss the older kids, early childhood is definitely my happy place. I'm certified in First Steps in Music and Music Rhapsody. In addition to teaching, I pet sit for a local pet sitting company, and here I am with one of my favorite clients, Mila. The first thing that I will cover is entering the room to music. I start every class with an entrance activity. I'll share a list of the musical selections that you can try out with your kids in the next slide, and I'll also link to them in the handout. When a class is lined up outside my door, I give really quick directions. Something like, all right, everyone, follow me and do what I do, or do what you hear in the song. Feel free to give some background on the music, ask questions, or review instrument care if you're using instruments for specific songs throughout the year, but at the beginning of the year, I just like to get started right away. If it's the first year of school for your pre-K and K classes, they may not be used to traveling in a nice line. It's okay to have a blob of kids move around the room with you at first. If the blob is just out of control and the kids are everywhere, direct them where to sit down. They will get the hang of it soon and it's totally okay to just lay out some classroom instruments on the floor and have them enter and play to the music instead. In fact, I usually do this for my two and three year olds for a month or so at the beginning of the year. I just have them come in and they immediately start playing. So you definitely wanna use instruments that are durable if you're doing this because I don't like to give a lot of directions to toddlers right up front. <laughs> and while they're playing, I can walk around and show them how to use the instruments as the song plays and slowly start to introduce new instruments as we move throughout the year. If you have an aide that comes to the room, this is a great job for them to help the kids as well. Once they do get the hang of it, I like to have whoever the line leader is for that day lead the line and I can watch them, encourage them, or set up a few last minute materials. Usually the songs will give clues as to what motions we're gonna perform, but you could also change the motions according to the form, the tempo, the dynamics, and so on. So after a month or two, I love having kids pick the motions. I'll go down the line of moving kids and they will each have a turn choosing a movement choosing a movement that the rest of the line will imitate. I highly recommend knowing their names by this point. And as a side note, I record all of my students and their names on my phone on the first day of school and I review them at home and right before they enter the classroom. Okay, when they begin to lose interest in this activity, just direct them to their seats. If a song's too short, you can repeat it as many times as you'd like. If it's too long, definitely just fade that music away and have them go sit down. If you're on a cart, you can still do this by playing the music on a Bluetooth speaker as you enter and have the kids stand up and follow you. Don't be afraid to use the same song for multiple weeks. It's neat to see them improving. All right, and here's that list. Most of the songs on this list are self-explanatory and I tried to only choose one song per artist, but a lot of these artists I use multiple songs from like Ziggy Marley and the Lori Bergner Band. Ziggy Says is one that I use at the very beginning of the year because the lyrics say things like Ziggy Says stand up tall, Ziggy Says bend down low, and as they move to the beat, they complete the motions. Follow the Leader is a super simple one by Ella Jenkins that tells the kids what to do as they walk around. Fast and slow. Um, obviously, we're going to move fast on the fast parts and slow on the slow parts, but sometimes on the fast parts, I have them hop like a bunny, and on the slow parts, they get down on the floor and crawl around like turtles. <laughs> I Can Shake My Shaker Egg by Mr. Eric and Mr. Michael is great for Halloween because it's to the tune of In the Hall of the Mountain King, and of course, they can start shaking their eggs faster and faster and louder and louder as the music progresses. The wolf theme from Peter and the Wolf is a very short one, and I like to repeat this one. I have the kids creep around on all fours like a wolf, like a hungry wolf looking for food. Um, Turkey Stop is a great one for November. Jump Up by Ladybug Music. I also um, use a lot of Ladybug Music in my class. Riding in the Car by Music Together. For this one, they're going to pretend to 
ride a car around the room and I like to give them a tambourine or a frame drum to use as a pretend steering wheel and they get a kick out of that. Highway Number 1 by Shenanigans is one of my favorites. There are two different versions. There's a version with animals and there's a version where they do a bunch of quick movements in succession. So I highly recommend doing the animal one. That's a lot easier and they travel to different cities in Australia and imitate the animals that they see. It's really fun. Um, that's also a really long one, so I usually only play half of the song, and in later weeks I can use the second half of the song. See how I'm jumping, that one's pretty self-explanatory if you give it a listen. And of course, you can play instruments or wave a scarf to any song that you'd like. So sometimes I like to match this up with different holidays or heritage months. So just pick any diverse assortment of music that you'd like your students to hear. Next up, I'll be sharing some vocal play activities. Like a lot of teachers, I include a vocal play activity with every lesson. Here are some that I've used this past year. The giant slinky that I'm using came from Five Below and I ordered the tape measure for the spider from Amazon. I'll link to all of these in the handout as well as some great resources from the rest of the crew. We also went up, woo! And the kids were like, touch the ceiling, touch the ceiling, which you can easily do, woo! And um, we did loud and quiet, woo! And a lot of other fun shapes. So the kids came up with a few good ones like um, throw it and clap, wee! I'm so bored. I wonder what's inside this purple tent. Let's follow the rabbit's path with our voices using the wee sound. Ready? Go. Wee. It's easy to create rhythms and melodies with books that use repeating phrases. You don't have to rack your brain for ideas because simple is often better. For example, Geo's Heart is a very sweet rhyming book about a boy born with a congenital heart defect. After every phrase of the book, the kids hit a gathering drum twice to create heartbeats. Boom, boom. For the book Ten Little Fingers and Ten Little Toes, every time I say ten little fingers, they clap. Ten little fingers. And then when I say ten little toes, they stomp their feet. Ten little toes. It's simple and they love it. And I'll show examples of all these books in the next slide. If you want to get more elaborate, you can try adding a sound story. Linda Siemens from Floating Down the River has a great session on sound stories from last year's conference, and I will post the link in the handout. With a sound story, you use classroom instruments to represent sounds in the book. You can play the instruments or give them to students. I created a sound story with the book Look Up. I used instruments like drums to create the sound of people walking. I've also given students castanets to create the sound whenever I turn to a page where there are people walking. I used an ocean drum to represent rain. The second half of the book is awesome and I use it as a movement activity and I will link to that in the handout as well. All right, so here are examples of me using the books. And just a heads up, 10 Little Fingers and 10 Little Toes is playing at twice the normal speed, so it's a little fast. Gio's heart was special. It gave love to all he knew. His heart had 
had a smile of its own, which grew and grew and grew. <laughs> All right. So here's a piece of Dio's heart to keep and guide you through. His heart was truly one of a kind. And Look Up by Jung Jin Ho. <gasps> Slam! They look like ants. Oh, oh. Look up. I'm here. Look at me. The second half I use as a movement activity. So I turn the book and you can read this book from any direction. You can flip it any way you want. It's a really cool book about perspective. So um, then I have, I go over the kids and I have them lay down like the little boy in the book. And I say, can you, can you move your body like his? And I'll walk by over them and they'll look up while they're lying on the ground and try to match his body shape. And as more people go by, I tell them to pick somebody to imitate and then I ask them to make their own shapes. And I really like this one where two people are making a shape together. Um, so yeah, this is a really cool book. I won't spoil the ending, but um, I love this one. And the kids love it too. And the great thing about that one is you can use it week after week. And the more you use the book, the more ideas you'll have for using the book. One of my favorite things to do with pre-K and kindergarten is playing the ukulele. I first learned how to do this in Lynn Kleiner's Music Rhapsody course, where she was having literal babies play. Then I started incorporating it into my first steps in music lessons, and I took that course with Dr. Missy Strong from Music Ed with Missy, and it was awesome. I used the simple songs from the first steps in music curriculum as my ukulele songs because they are only one or two chords. The ukulele that I like to use is the Kala Waterman Concert Ukulele because it's waterproof and easy to wipe down between classes. You also don't need a full set of ukuleles. I only have one at school, but sometimes I'll bring in a second ukulele from home so I can play duets with the kids. I do scaffold the steps over a long period of time, and this is so important because you don't want playing to be frustrating for the kids. The first thing I do is play the chord. I finger the chord and let the students strum the strings with their index finger. Then I'll sing a simple song to the beat of their strum. I just move the ukulele down the line from one kid to the next so that they all have an opportunity to play a solo. And that usually takes me about three minutes to do the whole class. Halfway through the year, I'll transition to having them hold it in their lap. I'll still finger the chords, but I'll let them strum with their thumb at this point. Then I'll start letting them hold the neck while they strum. 
I don't let them wrap their fingers around the neck yet, which usually isn't a problem because their fingers are small. But by the end of the year, I have them wrap their ring finger around the neck to finger the C chord. I put a little sticker on the A string spot where their finger should go, and most kids, especially kindergarten, are ready to strum and sing by themselves at this point. They've watched me play all year, and it feels natural and comfortable for them. After they've had their turn playing, they go line up at the door. I use the ukulele at the end of almost every lesson. One of their favorite songs is Ring Around the Rosie, and that's all in C major. And they don't line up after playing this one, only because, of course, they all fall down at the end. At the end of the song, I lift the ukulele up and the kids fall backwards onto their backs and wiggle around. They think it's hilarious. I also wanted to mention that Wikipedia states that this song is not based on the bubonic plague. Apparently, that is a myth. One final tip, if you are using a song in C, you don't have to worry about pressing down on the A string for them to make the C chord. A lot of times the kids won't play the A string very hard because it's the furthest away from them, so they might not even reach it at all. It still pretty much sounds like the song is in C. Introducing the ukulele turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it would be, so give it a try. Next up, I'll talk about how I used ukuleles in a digital recital with my kindergarten students. I was so proud of my students for learning how to sing and play the ukulele. And since we didn't have concerts last year, I decided to create a digital recital. I wrote a blog post about how to do this, but getting started is pretty simple. First, you want to decide if you want to showcase your students' best work in a recital format, or if you want to show their progress throughout the year by creating a long-range portfolio. This year I did a recital, but next year I think I'm going to put together a digital portfolio for every student. Every quarter or so we'll record something that we've been working on, and that way we can see how we started and ended the year in terms of music aptitude. Students can attend my school for four years, so I also thought that extending the portfolio over the course of years would make a great keepsake for students and their families. I was able to set up the Padlet at home, and then when I opened the Padlet link on my phone, I was able to record each student individually. I also set up the Padlet to have every kid's names ready to go. That way, all I had to do was add the video to their name. I just recorded short 10 to 30 second videos of the kids performing. It was really low key and super low pressure. It didn't even take up the whole class period. I just thought it was a really easy way to put a little performance together. Padlet was easy to set up on my phone, but I've heard that Seesaw and Flipgrid are great as well. If you want to set up a classroom portfolio, you could use Edublogs as well, and parents could check out the website to see what's been going on in your room. I may transition to Seesaw or Flipgrid next year when I start creating year-long portfolios. One major tip I would give is to slowly let students choose what they want to perform. First, start by having everyone do the same thing. Then, if they want to showcase a second activity, they can add a second video. Once they're used to having these recitals, get them thinking about it early and have them choose what they'd like to present. But at first, have everyone do the same thing, and then you can gradually add more student choice. The song we recorded was Happy Ukulele by Yuka Baby. I love this song because there are so many verses. You can choose one or a few. You can sing it as a duet or try call and response. It's very versatile. Here's a blurred image of what our Padlet looked like. Kids could just click on the video of themselves and play it for their families, and everyone got a real kick out of it. From the kids to the families, admin loved it, and so did their teachers. That is all from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, especially if you are new to teaching pre-K or kindergarten. I'll have clickable links to everything in the handout. There's also an early childhood section in the virtual exhibit hall with lots of vocal plays and activities from the rest of the crew. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.